Hello everyone and welcome to this latest Engine Snack. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look today at the game between Berserk and Topple from the TCEC Season 22 League 3. Um, one of the themes that Natasha and I uh, highlighted in Game Changer um, was the theme of slow moving attacks. There were a number of games between uh, Alpha Zero and Stockfish 8, in which Alpha Zero seemed to have all the time in the world to uh, move its pieces uh, with painful slowness towards Stockfish's king, and Stockfish didn't seem to manage to do anything about it. What was also striking was that Stockfish's evaluation uh, didn't really reflect what you felt was happening to the position until relatively late. Um, and this was really, you know, a big example of the um, uh, very big awareness that uh, neural nets have of uh, long-term danger, of uh, the potential for improving your own position. Now, uh, yeah, at the top level of engine chess, you don't see many games like that anymore. Uh, engines like uh, Stockfish, like uh, Leela, like Komodo Dragon, you know, they all anticipate danger so early that um, uh, they're, you know, ready to take decisive action, you know, uh, 15 moves before you know that something's uh, likely to go wrong. But at the slightly lower levels, uh, you definitely see this. And this game uh, between Berserk and Topple is a lovely example of this. Um, what is the position? Well, you know, Topple's got the, the two bishops. There's also a, um, uh, a weak pawn on b5 to, uh, to aim at. However, uh, the centre is blocked. White has a big space advantage. This uh, pawn on e5 creates an outpost on d6, takes away the defensive square f6 from the knight. And the black king is, um, well, kind of tied down to the defense of the pawn on g7. And there's that rook on h8, which is, uh, well, never going to get active either. So, um, yeah, I mean, actually, Berserk was already seeing a massive advantage for, uh, for white. And uh, Topple was seeing something like 0 0.00. So it's interesting to see, you know, which engine was right and uh, how it all happened. Um, so king g8 played, knight h2. Nice slow-moving uh, attack there. Threatening knight takes h6 check now. So um, uh, bishop c8 played. Topple being uh, a little bit cute there. If you go um, knight takes h6 check, then um, we'll just go king h8 and then try and take the h5 pawn afterwards. Um, yeah, you might even have uh, moves like uh, f5 and queen takes h5. So it's probably, uh, probably quite a, a cunning little idea there. But... There's just no need to do any of that. Knight f3 was played, king h8, rook e1. Berserk just bringing all the pieces uh, uh, into play. Knight to b8, topple uh, aiming for the pawn on b5. But, well, you'll notice that these guys are not doing a great deal for the, uh, for the king. I mean, Berserk's uh, uh, you know, evaluation here was super high already, but topple was still uh, around the 0, 0, 0 mark. Um, queen c1, threatening uh, to take on h6. Queen f8 defending, and now, um, yeah, I mean, you can't be surprised that there's uh, something good here when you look at uh, these queenside pieces and this passive rook. And knight f6 was played by um, Berserk. And the nice characteristic of, um, of this um, uh, attack is actually that there's not really that much rush. So um, knight e5 played, bishop f6, bishop takes h6, a very nice one there. If you go um, uh, rook takes h6, then we've got uh, knight f7 check and queen h6 check, just uh, winning. Queen d8 played, queen f4, knight d7, rook e e3, just bringing the pieces in. Bishop e5, d takes e5. And, you know, it's not like there's an immediate mate. I mean, black's actually managing to defend. But again, you know, for Berserk, it's very, very clear that uh, there's no long-term way for black to get out of this. There's too many good things going for white. All these weak uh, uh, dark squares on the king's side and all these pieces that can exploit it. You know, the open g file, the half open f file. Well, half open when you, you get a rook on the third rank there. So um, bishop b7 was played, bishop g5 f6 and now this is another striking episode of play takes takes queen c7 and again we're not looking for anything uh, easily decisive berserk just entrenching its pieces just uh, all over black's position here rook g8 rook g6 rather uh, a lovely little move here and uh, i mean you know if you give white enough time you'll probably just uh, you know move the king side pawns up and just uh, crush you completely so a4 played queen d4 
uh, queen f7 and now this uh, lovely little idea rook takes e6 and after queen takes e6 we've got f7 check well black tried to uh, defend a little bit but after rook e7 bishop e6 um, this was uh, pretty much over. Uh, Berserk could have chosen pretty much any way to do it. Berserk chose to uh, to take this piece back. And then after rook e7 afterwards, it was completely lost. But very striking and, uh, yeah, you know, brings it all back, really, from, uh, you know, 2018, really. That was the Alpha Zero uh, Stockfish 8 match when, uh, you know, positions like this were still quite uh, commonplace. Again, as I said, disappeared now from the top echelon of... Uh, of, uh, of engine games but uh, yeah when you've got a, an engine of the class of berserk against a, a somewhat weaker engine like uh, like topple you still see games like this and still you know really impressive how uh, berserk built up the attack and then struck with knight f6 and then just calmly brought more pieces into the attack you know the the sacrifice actually nearly uh, just created new squares for white's pieces and that gave a lot of room for white's ma major pieces to move in behind you know it's all about increasing the mobility of your pieces and uh, understanding that the black pieces you know can do absolutely nothing in the long term to stop it happening really nice play from berserk